approximately 40 years ago, uh, when I finished my training and took my first academic job, uh, I had an idea for a study. I felt we didn't have accurate ways to diagnose vascular catheter-related bloodstream infection. And so I developed a very simple quantitative way to culture catheters. It's very inexpensive, it's very reliable. We studied it, it's been validated in many studies around the world. So it, it gave us, it, the study was important for two reasons. It allowed us to diagnose catheter-related bloodstream infection much more accurately, number one. And number two, uh, it gave us a lot of insight into the pathogenesis of infections, exactly why infections occur, realizing that they started with local invasion of the catheter insertion site and the local infection then spread to the bloodstream and caused bacteremia. When a patient had a bacteremia, you are never sure where the bacteremia came from. If they didn't have a pneumonia or a soft tissue infection or a urinary tract infection, which are easy to rule out, you never knew with certainty whether it came from the catheter or not. And the older methods were qualitative and they had no predictive value. All we did was we hypothesized that the catheter, if it was infected, would have a large numbers of organisms colonizing the surface. So we tested a variety of simple ways to prove that, and the simplest turned out to be removing the catheter aseptically and taking the little segment and rolling it across a blood auger plate and counting the number of organisms that grew on the plate. And we found it had very high predictive value it was very simple, very inexpensive. It could be done by a literally a non-microbiologist could be trained to do it very easily. And uh, it's become the standard of culture and catheters around the world over the last three or four decades. If there's any progress that we've made in control of healthcare-associated infections around the world over the last 25 years, uh, it's been with catheterized bloodstream infections. We've made more progress there than any other infection, far more. And uh, we're on the threshold of very, very low rates. We're not quite zero, and hospitals can have a zero rate for a month or two or three, but we've gotten the rate down tenfold over the last 30 years. I mean, it's a huge, huge reduction. Many hospitals have had at least a tenfold reduction. Uh, if we looked at large databases from the United States and Europe, from hundreds of hospitals, we find that the mean rates of catheterated bloodstream infections have dropped from an average of five to 10 per thousand catheter days down to one or less. That is a lot of progress. And catheterated bloodstream infections kill patients. So by Preventing catheterated bloodstream infections, we're protecting patients from a fatal hospital complication. ICPIC has become a premier international meeting devoted exclusively to infection control. Uh, there's really only two other comparable meetings, uh, both of them are held in the United States. They don't draw nearly the international uh, attendance that ICPIC does. And ICPIC is serving an extremely important role in promulgating and disseminating infection control around the world, particularly to the countries that have limited resources. ICPIC is a mechanism, it can be a centralized uh, repository of information for these uh, professionals in these hospitals. And one thing that's become very clear to us when we look at hospitals in the developing world, if we go to Africa, or parts of the Middle East, parts of Asia, uh, uh, it's very, very clear. The people are bright, they're very dedicated, they're, they're motivated to try to do better for their patients, but they desperately need information, they need training. And just good training and feedback of results to practitioners has a huge impact. Um, if you want to look at what we're doing for people in the third world, millions, literally, a patient's die every year from malaria, from tuberculosis, from childhood diarrhea. Millions, particularly children. It turns out that at least that many die of hospital-acquired infections. When we've gone into these hospitals and get baseline rates of infection, 
They're astronomical. They're extremely high simply because they don't have the training or the information on how to protect patients. And by providing that, you can make an enormous impact. We can do much more in protecting patients in the developing world from hospital-acquired infections than we can today from protecting from malaria or childhood diarrhea. Doesn't mean we shouldn't be working on those problems, we are. But we can do immediately, literally within months of setting up a program in a hospital, we can have an impact that's enormous, just enormous. ICPIC is playing a very central role in that mission. And I think one of the most important missions of the Western world, the wealthy countries, is to bring basic infection control to the entire world. It's morally unacceptable for any patient except who's admitted to a hospital anywhere not to have basic infection control knowledge applied to their care and simple technology that will protect them from life-threatening infection. It's a tragedy to die of a preventable infection. And with infection control, uh, we can make a difference. And ICPIC is playing a very central role in that mission.